What's up everyone, Sean Count Blagrith. I'm here starting another series. Yes, I will complete this one before I get these uh, comments of what about Black Metal Essentials? What about uh, the Carcass discography? Um, that's still happening. But I'm going to do it when I want. And the Black Metal Essentials will continue when certain things line up. Uh, I'm not going to get into that because it will be a surprise. But Guys, I'm here to talk about my favorite musician of all time, and that is Mr. Thomas Gabriel Fisher, a.k.a. Tom G. Warrior, and I am going to go through his entire discography from the very beginnings with Hellhammer all the way up to Celtic Frost, Apollyon's Sun, then Celtic Frost again, and then finally Trypticon in time for the brand new album of just mammoth proportions and what I'm here to talk about today is where it all began and that is with the 1983 Prowling Death Records release of Death Fiend by Hellhammer alright guys <clears throat> it's time to go way back to 1983 and discuss what was going on in the music scene at the time if you were to look at 1983 metal wise there really wasn't a hell of a lot that was happening in the extreme metal side of things there wasn't really anything that was too, that extreme out there Venom was the most extreme but I'm not really going to get into my feelings on Venom there was a few of the early uh, starts that would later go on to become what we now know as extreme metal and Hellhammer was one of those bands that really revolutionized extreme music pretty much forever. The whole inspiration behind Hellhammer was actually Venom and Tom G. Warrior listening to the In League with Satan 7 inch and instead of playing it at 45 he played it at 33 and he loved how heavy it sounded and he kind of wanted to do that. He wanted to make a more ugly, disgusting, more extreme version of Hellhammer. And here on the first demo, which was actually never released, so to speak. Uh, they had the layout and everything ready and just never put it out. And instead they took the other songs from the same session, which is The Triumph of Death, and put that out instead. But here I'm holding the demo Death Fiend and let's start talking about this Death Fiend is a very raw recording um, this is raw by standards of most black metal this is raw to the standards of what most people would say is very extreme sounding music and guys this is about as extreme as it gets for 1983 uh, very thrashy, very groovy, very heavy. But the recording of this, let me explain to you how the mix goes. Bass, drums, vocals, guitar. And <laughs> this is pretty much an all bass album, it feels like to me. It's so bassy. But it helps add to the heaviness and really the unique trademark sound that became early Hellhammer. Um, if you like really groovy, sort of thrashy, heavy, new wave of British heavy metal inspired, yet played with a more extreme sensibility, this demo is definitely for you. Uh, one of my favorite things about this demo is the fact that the vocals are traded not only with uh, Tom, but I want to make sure I get his uh, name correctly here. Yes, with Steve Warrior. Steve Warrior, not really his brother, uh, was the bassist of Hellhammer. And the songs, it pretty much alternates between vocals. Uh, very close to the same exact style of vocal. But the variation in between the songs is absolutely fantastic, guys. Uh, one of my favorite things about this demo is, despite how sloppy it is, you can tell it's played with 
100% conviction and heart. You know that they're putting their heart and soul into this. This is the best they can do. This is the best they can write. And you know what, for being their very first thing outside of the Grave Hill days, which sadly there is no recordings of, this is really good. Um, it's sloppy, yes, it's very groovy, but it's very heavy. It's very extreme. It's got very catchy and memorable parts to it. It starts off with what many people would consider to be the Hellhammer Anthem, which is Maniac. Uh, those of you that have heard the song, you know that riff instantly. And you could hear, even in the early days, in this early version of Maniac, that they're playing it with their heart and soul. And that's what I love about this demo so much. It is very genuine. Still, the production and the mixing on it is holds it back from being a really great uh, album. And for the most part, yeah, there is some variation in between songs on here. But for the most part, this demo kind of suffers from everything being very catchy, but very same sounding. And I don't know how I feel about that. At the same time, it's very good what the songs are, but there's not a lot of variation in between everything that's happening. The best part about this, besides the absolutely infectiously catchy riffs, is the vocals. There's parts on here where you could tell this is where the uh, scream sort of originated in metal, because there's parts where Tom is just wailing like a maniac. He sounds like a maniac. He sounds like he's getting killed. He sounds like he's being murdered. And I love that. You also hear the early incarnation of the famous Tom G. Warrior, uh, which I love. It's cheesy. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. Um, but, as I said, the musicianship is so damn sloppy on this. It's very simplistic, very basic. There isn't a hell of a lot really more to say about this, other than if you want a really catchy, sort of thrashy, proto-black metal, proto-death metal sort of album, this is definitely for you. Um, but if you're looking for something better from Hellhammer, wait for later on in the career. For a score, this isn't a bad demo by any means, but it's just very sloppy. It's very, very, very poorly mixed. Uh, it's one of the worst mixes I've ever heard, but it's still a damn good listen, and I recommend you guys pick this up. Uh, this is actually part of the Demon in Trails uh, triple vinyl set. I actually have the picture disc version. Uh, if you find this, definitely pick it up. It's worth the money. Uh, three LPs containing every Hellhammer demo. Uh, all with picture uh, pro printed inner sleeves on a very nice picture disc. Uh, it sounds excellent. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, big booklet and uh, poster, gatefold, all that good stuff. And if you don't have a turntable or you don't like picture discs or whatever, there is a standard black vinyl version, but that sells for a lot of money. And there is also the CD version of Demon and Trails, which is set up like the vinyl and actually has um, cool little inserts for each disc. But guys, as I said, for a score, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It's not really a bad release, but you could tell what is going to become of Hellhammer. It gives you a little peek into the future, a little glimpse of what is going to happen for this absolutely influential band. And uh, that's it guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. And as always, keep it metal.